Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King and this week's programme is very fitting for the weather. Nice and warm, little breezy, little overcast, so a perfect moment to take you all around Marbella to see how many things are going on all the time, regardless of the weather. We're going to start off with a wonderful stroll along the boulevard, uh, the Paseo Maritimo, and we are also going to meet some youngsters who've started up a business on the beach a couple of years ago and are doing really well, and it's lovely to see local success stories. Let's start this week's Marbella Now. It's a brand new day Hey, hey, hey It's a brand new day Halfway Twisted I hope you don't mind, I've come with the cameras. Of course we don't mind. Come on down, come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this group of youngsters is just amazing. Just over two years ago, Jose started this amazing massage service on the beach. He got his license, and through that, you're growing now to have places all over the place. I'm gonna, okay, this is Alex, and this is Polly. These are my shoes, I'll put those there. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's here in sandals, but the nice thing about Marbella is if you dress accordingly, we're adaptable to any circumstance. Alex, sweetie, I'm going to speak to Jose first. Jose, me, well, yeah. when did you get started in this world of massage? Well, started, started. We did like four years ago. We had a, we started studies for for you know massage therapies, and then we had the idea, Alex and I, just to create somewhere a place to you know to develop all these. Uh, therapies, and then we asked, uh, we uh, um, applied for a t this tent in the council. We got it two years ago, or three years ago. Started step by step, and now, apart from this, we got uh, in other places as well. We got in Elviria, we got in a hotel, another tent with another girl which couldn't be here today. And then we started in another hotel in Puerto Banos very soon, just having an um, external service of massages. And I don't know, I mean, uh, everything started as an idea four or five years ago, and then uh, we've been growing step by step, and now we are here. You know, <laughs> it's wonderful, and uh, being on a Suka beach so often, we've got to know these amazing guys and see actually how the business has grown. But Jose, did you like as a little boy think I'm going to have a massage company when I grow up? I mean, how did no, you know? not really. No, well, to be honest, when I was a child, I always wanted to be air steward, you know, for the airlines, and I actually did that in England. I worked for an airline for four years, but then I moved to Marbella five, six years ago. I met Alex and as I said earlier, we just we were actually working together in a sugar beach in that beach bar as waiters. But then we we both had the idea, oh, what about if we could do something related to health and wellness? It was just started as an idea, but then you need a course obviously and then we start in blah 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 student and then we're here. I don't know. It's like it it wasn't a dream from the childhood, you know? It was you, life. Alex so you met this lovely young yeah. man and uh, where, would, <laughs> where was well, your background? Where, is, where do you come from? Well, I'm a Pilates instructor and then we do the certification uh, together of massage, shiatsu and Thai massage. And well, it's like a little dream that we'll be together. It's like he said, it's not from childhood, but we did it together and we wanted to bring health and wellness to the people and that mind-body connection that we always Search and what a beautiful we... place to do it right here oh, on yes. the beach, which is your it's a lovely <laughs> office. It's a lovely <laughs> office. <laughs> office ever. Uh, let's go meet Polly. Polly, not only have I met her on the beach, you came to our United Nationalities Summit to see Michael Tellinger. Yes, I did. He was absolutely amazing. It was wonderful. Really good. To, he's really inspirational. The people say, don't meet your heroes. I say, don't worship idiots, basically. He was wonderful. It was so inspirational. It was great. It was a really wonderful day. Well, that's actually that whole thing of Michael Tellinger coming to Marbella. It was a bit like Jose and Alex's career here. Things sometimes just take you there and it brought him 
to our summit and apart from that you're here giving treatments and massages? Yeah, I originally trained in Thailand. I learned, I actually learned originally from a couple of nuns in a temple in the mountains. Came here, got my certificate in Thai massage, worked with Jose and Ali for the last two years. I haven't really looked back, it's just an amazing place to be. And it's just, you know, we actually help people every day on the beach in the sunshine. What could be, what could be better, really? What could be better? And you also covered, like, the nutritional aspect. Yeah, I'm, I've done my nutritional therapy course, and next year I'll be a fully trained naturopath. So what we want to do is teach people empowerment. So basically you learn enough about your health and wellness that you eventually won't need us anymore. With, we do the massage, which obviously we've got to keep helping with, but with the nutrition, it's kind of building yourself up and working with fatigue and checking which organs, mixing ancient wisdoms with modern science to get you the best version of yourself possible. Well, so. That sounds really cool. We don't often, let me get back in here with Jose, we don't often take time for ourselves, but it really is, there's more than just all People feel like they're spoiling themselves, but there is more to it than that. There are really medical beneficial reasons sure, for coming are. and hanging out here with you guys. Yeah, well, actually people, I mean, we, we talk about that sometimes. It's like people tend to think that I go to a physio or a doctor when I'm hurt myself. But we realize that the last few years, well, with the uh, um, last few years, yeah, people are starting to be more conscious about having a massage, not because I hurt myself it's because it's going to be beneficial myself just even a relaxing massage just as, as a precautionary thing you know like as a prevention Revenge. thing yeah and uh, so we're happy you know we can share that with people and make them conscious about it's not like this is a business to make money with massages it's just something to you know to push people into that change or conscious and we think we can see that on, 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 not just on tourists and local people living here they come sometimes we do some offers you know for for locals as well and you know, it I think, sense. yeah, it makes sense because that's what we're looking for. Not more, farther than the business itself, just to find a place where people get conscious about nutrition, about Pilates, about massages, and a bit of all together. That is om equilibrium. That's the idea, you know. It's om equilibrium, yeah. Alex. Stress obviously we make us all tense up, and that must affect us so much. How often should we go initially? because it's hard to relax and it must help if you get a massage. Yeah, well, we try to focus on the person and in their needs. And normally we find people with a lot of stress, and normally in the neck, lower back. So we do a proper massage for that needs. And also we try to uh, aware the people that the proper stretches for them, the proper uh, essence they can use to help them to feel better. And that's what everything we do and, and I will say yeah. one, once a week it's fine I don't know even, even I said to people even once a month but just try to get a routine and try to find one hour in your life to treat yourself not here whatever you know we just want people to to do it somewhere else but, but if it's here it's, it's better, better still <laughs> not because it, not, not because he's sad it's because look yeah. at this is you know yes how not can better you, but it's a great offer how it can really you, is, yes. yes. How can you not relax How here, can you, you know? Not? Well, <laughs> on that note, I think from Om Equilibrium, we just have to say... Om. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. There are so many places to go to in Marbella. It really isn't just the beach, the mountains, shopping. There are beautiful hidden treasures all along the coast, and this is one of them. We're in Volubilis. Volubilis? Volubilis. Volubilis, but it's a chanting garden, frequently holding markets here. And that is the, the king of markets. You and Noella, the king of the, oh, the local on. artisan markets. Hi, Juan Carlos. Hi, Nicole. So you have something to do with this place. You're always here. What's the situation? What's the story with Volubilis? Well, uh, Volubilis, uh, the name of Volubilis, it comes from uh, a place in Morocco. It was a Roman place. Uh, called Volubilis 
Um, it's a fantastic place. And then uh, they decide to put the name to the shop, the name Volubilis. Volubilis started in 1995 uh, being um, an antique shop and at the same time, uh, uh, as you can see, um, we do lots of decoration. Um, it's the garden's enchanting, oh, it's magical, this, this it's like is, a movie setting. This is why we do uh, the markets here in the garden. And they're beautiful, I mean, the, the place is beautiful. Now during the uh, last uh, five or six years, things with Antique, they've been difficult. Because, you know, um, lots of people, they... Uh, you know, all, all this thing that uh, happened in, in, in all the Spain. Yeah, and people are spending Europe. money on necessities and not on, Say, on, on luxuries. Now they start again um, uh, putting money on. But I always say to, uh, to people, listen, uh, if you buy a modern thing, okay, you can um, have it in your house for uh, five, six years, and then you want to sell it and you lose money. If you buy an antique, you can... You can just have it for 20 years in your house, you sell it again, and then you get more money. And they, we used to have here beautiful things. I mean, um, I want you to come one day uh, and uh, have a look at everything that we have, we've got here because we touch lots of different things, paintings, uh, furniture. Uh, I mean, it's like a small market. And of course, the place. And it's it, just gorgeous. Can this? Can we use this place for events and things as well, or is it we just did. as? A we did. We did use it for um, some sort of events. Uh, we used to do um, um, some. You know, when people they 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 want they want to get married and they want to do the photos and things like that. They come to the garden. Uh, exhibitions uh, from paintings. You came here once. I did, yes, Jordi Moya, and I yeah. call him the, the, the. Well, I won't say what I call him, but it was a very unique type of artwork. Yeah, and uh, and now we were doing the markets, and uh, we've done uh, two or three uh, dinners here, beautiful ones, and uh, and now. We keep going with the markets and... It's absolutely gorgeous. And the nice fantastic. thing is that we look like we're in the middle of nowhere, but we're actually right next to Casa Rasu Gallery yeah. and, the, and in, the front, in the heart of the Golden Mile. In front of the Mabea Club. Well, actually, Shahid told me that they are in front of Casa Rasu, not the other way around. <laughs> yeah. In front of Casa Rasu Gallery. Yeah. Juan Carlos, we will definitely come and go inside, check out all the oh, different please. things that you offer, because I know it's another world unto another itself. Another world. And we don't have time for that on this week's programme. But thank you for hosting us here today. It's just been a perfect setting for programme. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I hope to see you next time. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely come and do it. What are yeah. the opening times of Volubilis? Uh, we open at 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock, and then from 5 o'clock until 8, sometimes half, half past 8. So it's kind of like a real shop, but it doesn't yeah. have a feeling of a shop, because no. it's just so cool. I know. This is why it's, um, it's a, a shop that is completely different from the rest of the, uh, of the shops that uh, you can buy um, furniture. Well, it's definitely an outing. I know that our lovely ladies from Ireland who live in Holland have had a fabulous time here doing some shopping. And what a great way to spend a day, particularly one like today, that we've had sun, wind, and now a little and bit of rain. A little bit of rain. Thank you, yeah. Juan Carlos. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. If you're ever flicking through the channels here in Marbella, you might have come across the face of Hector and Eva. They are part of an amazing program called Estate a Loro. Something to do with the para, <laughs> no idea where that comes, probably some Spanish phrase, but they are just so much fun together with El Way. <laughs> who's not with us today really fun fun show and as I love watching it as do many I thought it'd be nice to actually meet the guys they don't speak much English I think maybe a bit more than they're letting on but we'll start with Spanish first of all ladies Eva hello hello <laughs> I'm very I feel very honored to be sitting next to Eva because she's like one of the TV stars that I watch so it's a real honor to be chatting the program it's fun. Where did the idea come from? ¿Dónde salió la idea de empezar el programa? 
Bueno, te comento un poquito los comienzos, digamos, fue un poquito maquinar la, la cabecita de él. Ven, eh, empezó a pensar lo que es, eh, en qué podíamos dirigir el programa, el nombre, fue como una experiencia... Prefiero que lo cuente él porque ya está maquinando, maquinando. Cuéntalo tú, I was asking Eva how the program idea came up. She said, but there we need to start with the lovely Hector. Now, yeah. some of you who see Spanish TV might recognize the face, others won't, but there's a very famous Spanish singer <laughs> in Spain and his name is Bisbal. And he won Operación Triunfo years ago and became exceedingly famous all around the world and Hector, es que you look just like Big Bisbal. Is that difficult for you? Is difficult que parezcas a Bisbal o una ayuda? Bueno, a veces es, es difícil porque hay gente que, que igual no le gusta, ¿no? Pero también es una ayuda porque, hombre, es una imagen que siempre ayuda. Es un cantante famoso y lo conoce todo el mundo. Entonces también es una ayuda. Y yo intento siempre divertirme. So he's saying that it can be a little bit of a hindrance, but being such a famous guy and looking like him actually opens doors. And the idea is to have fun. El programa es divertido. It's fun. ¿Qué hacéis? ¿En qué os basáis? ¿Cómo es vuestro guión? Claro, no, en realidad nosotros no tenemos guión porque cuanto menos guión hay yo creo que es más divertido. Nuestro programa eh, está basado en, en informar de una forma divertida para que la gente sepa dónde tiene que ir, dónde puede ir y, y que cuando lo vea en la tele se, se pegue una sonrisa, se ríe un poquito y, y quiera ir a ese sitio. What he's saying is absolutely no script whatsoever. They actually just limit themselves to going to all the different events to show everybody what's going on. They can see what it's like and see if it's something that they'd like to do, but always with a big smile and hoping that everyone else is on. Funciona, eh? It really works. Because when we watch the show, which I recommend, ¿en qué canal se os puede ver? What channel can we watch you? Sí, Andaluz Televisión, los viernes a las 11 de la noche estará al loro. <laughs> <laughs> that was well practiced. They're on um, Onda, Onda, Luz. Onda Luz, which is Light Wave. And that's on also the streaming on Spanish TV, like RTV, Marbella. And it's at 11 o'clock on Friday nights. And está de al loro. <laughs> Welcome to this beautiful Roman courtyard, another one of Marbella's hidden treasures that we get to experience on Marbella now. Now, I'm Patrick Grant, I'm your legal beagle, finding all the tips and tricks for the uh, navigating your way through Spanish laws and problems that you might have. This week we have a question from a viewer and he wants to know how he can import his EU car from his country Germany into Spain. Now this applies to broadly everybody in the European Union. If you bring your car from your home country into Spain, you intend to keep it here for a period of time, you are at some point gonna have to matriculate it into Spanish license plates. So basically you're gonna have to get a Spanish number plate and register it with the Spanish authorities. If you look at it on the face of it, it looks like, as everything Spanish, a little bit of a complicated procedure. But hopefully with the next few, few minutes of tips, I will be able to help you guide your way through this. So the first thing that you are going to need is a certificate of conformity. That's an EU-wide certificate and it comes from the manufacturer of the car. In order to um, get your certificate of conformity, the first thing you're going to need is the chassis number for your vehicle. Now, if you're nice and organized and you have your logbook to hand, it's likely the chassis number should be in there. They're always quite a long number. If you can't find it anyway, just pop the bonnet of your car and it's usually on a metal plate on the engine of the car somewhere. The best thing that you can probably do is take a picture of it. That way, when you get back to your desk and start typing it in or recording it, it's much easier and you don't have to keep popping back to the car and getting oily hands. So once you've got the chassis number, you need to Google um, your car make and model for the certificate of conformity. And what you need to do at that stage is enter in your chassis number on the website of your car manufacturer. So if you've got a Volkswagen Polo, you need to type in conformity certificate Volkswagen Polo. Uh, the web page will come up. You'll be invited to type in your chassis number. And for between 40 and 140 euros, you will be able to print a PDF of the certificate of conformity with the chassis number for your car. And that's the first document that you're going to need. The next thing you're going to need is the logbook. Again, if you're organized and you have the logbook, that's great. If you don't have it, you could be in some difficulties, but you can always get hold of a copy of that. 
The next thing you're going to need, and a lot of people fall short of this, is the bill of sale, the receipt for when you bought the car. Now, if you bought your car from new, you're going to have all kinds of receipts for that. But if you've got a second-hand car or a third-hand car, you may not have it. Now, there are some advisors that would say to you, quite simply, just write up a bill of sale with the right date on it from the change of ownership in the logbook, and you should be all right. Now, once you've got those two documents, your certificate of conformity and your current logbook, you're going to need to get a Spanish ITV. That's not the TV channel if you're British, it's the equivalent of an MOT. It's the test that your car has to go through every single year if it's over a certain period of years old in order to test its road safety and road worthiness. They look at the tyres, the engine, the exhaust fumes, etc. and just make sure that your car is safe. Now, you need to get this done first of all, and it's going to be quite a rigorous test, the first one, when you're uh, transferring the ownership of your car or the registration of your car to Spain. They're going to check absolutely everything to make sure that that car is ready to be registered on the Spanish roads and it's fully safe to do so. So you need to go online to book an MOT and we'll put the uh, link on our Facebook page for Friday night when you're watching this program. You can book it at the local ITV office and you just need to take your car in along with the certificate of conformity and the car will be checked. It could take a couple of days if you leave it there and it usually costs between 115 and 130 euros. For that, you are going to need to remember again some documents. Your passport and a photocopy, your logbook and a photocopy, the certificate of conformity and a photocopy and of course your NIE and your residency card because that's all important. The other thing that you may well need is your padron. We bash on about this every week on Marbella now, practically. This is the census. This is when you move to a town in Spain, you sign up at the local Ayunamento, you tell them that you're living there and uh, you are then registered on their books. There's a whole series of advantages to doing this and a whole series of disadvantages to not doing it, including being able to register your car in Spain. Again, to do that, you're going to need to go to the Unimento offices. You're going to need to take a copy of your passport and a photocopy, a copy of your NIE certificate and a photocopy or your residency card. Uh, and of course, the rental contract for your property um, and a photocopy of that. Just ask at the town hall for a padron. They'll give you the certificate. Maybe you'll need to go back the next day. But you take that along to your ITV as well when you go to collect the car and that will help you enormously. At this point, you could opt to get the help of a gestor or indeed a lawyer. Gestors are helpers. They're people in every Spanish town and city that operate solely to assist you with dealing with bureaucracy because sometimes it's difficult. Gestors generally have very, very good contacts. They know exactly where to go. And the good thing is that they've done this before where you haven't. So they know the paperwork that you are going to need. Um, if you don't choose to go to a gestor, you can always do this yourself and you will need to go to the Ayunamento Trafico and you will need to take the documents that we've already discussed. The Certificate of Conformity, you will need to take for copies of your passport, copies of your uh, registration, copies of your ITV pass certificate and you will need to pay the taxes on the matriculation. Remember, the taxes on the matriculation is up to 12% of the value of your car. So bear that in mind before you go for the transfer. It's all looked up in a big black book that the Spanish authorities have. Um, so it could be a couple of years out of date, but that is the value that they will take for your car. So just bear that in mind and do your research before you transfer the car over. Because if, for example, you have a car that's worth no more than a thousand euros it may well be worth buying a car in Spain instead so you've got this in steps now the first thing to do is to get that certificate of conformity the EU certificate with your chassis number on printed out then of course you need to get or make sure that you've got your residency card which we're always explaining how you can get or your NIE certificate your Padron certificate from the town hall. You can present all of these at the Trafico, you will be asked to pay the fees and you can get it done. But my advice as ever is to use a gestor. The fees are quite minimal in these terms and they will be explained to you before you do it. Um, but you do need to collect the documents beforehand. 
As ever in Spain, my best tip to you is to start a folder of just useful documents. Photocopies of your passport, photocopies of your NIE, photocopies of your Padron. So you are at least getting yourself a head start on all the things that you might need to do for signing up for this, that and the other. So that hopefully is a short answer to how you can get Spanish number plates on your car. If you have any questions in the future, you just get in touch with us, patrick.charles.grant at gmail.com or you can get in touch with us on the Marbella Now Facebook page. Until next week, have an absolutely cracking weekend and look after yourselves. Take care. Hey, hey. As we often say, you just never know who you're going to bump into in Marbella. Well, last week after recording the Marbella Now show, I met these lovely ladies at La Sala in Puerto Banús. And although we weren't sitting at the same table, we ended up having lunch together <laughs> and we had a great time. So I'd like to introduce the lovely Una and Margaret and Helen, who wasn't with us last week, who's come for a holiday. You're all now leaving. So I thought it would be nice to have them join us and say how their holiday was. You're all Irish, but live in Holland. Yes. Right, yes. okay. So yes. let's start with you, Una. How has your holiday in Marbella been? Oh, it's been absolutely terrific. One of the best holidays of my life. I enjoyed every single minute of it. Marbella is absolutely beautiful. The Spanish people are so nice, so friendly. And we've had an absolutely terrific time. Too short, would love to stay much longer. Will you be coming back? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Luckily, my daughter and her husband have an apartment here, so we can come here as often as we like. Yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. That's I wonderful. hope to come more often, definitely. And I look forward to seeing you. Yes, we really did have a, a fabulous lunch. lunch. And Do Margaret here. Your friend again. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret, so what have you guys been doing? You've been going out for dinner, being on the oh, beach? We've been on the beach. Well, I can't take much sun, so I sit in the shade. And yeah, we go out for dinner. Um, we also go to the Irish pub and we've met lots of people and had good laughs. So we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Wonderful. And yeah. Helen, have you been trying the local Spanish dishes? Oh yeah, we had some paella and uh, with some gorgeous fish, really beautiful fish. Uh, we're down in the boardwalk, so um, lovely restaurants in that area. So really nice food. And of course the lovely vino as well. Yes, it's yeah. nice, the lovely yeah. wines. So will you two be also coming back again? Oh, definitely, absolutely. That's yes, sure. yes. This is my third time here. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're almost Marbais. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been here a couple of times actually, yeah. so it's lovely. Wonderful. Well, these ladies are going to make their way to the airport. As you can see, they're ready to go. But so, so nice that they will be coming back. Marbella will welcome you yes. and wait for you with open arms. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey. Good afternoon, here we are again. Usually I bring a little puppy like I did last week and that puppy has in the meantime been adopted, which is, of course is very wonderful. But today I have with me a mummy. This is Baba. Baba was found in a cardboard box. It was locked and closed and it had two little puppies in it as well. It was just put out on the road, not too far from AAA and luckily she was found in time and brought to us. Now she's in foster and she's looking for a permanent home. Her two puppies have luckily already been adopted and they have found a forever home. So you see, it is still happening that people come with little dogs, big dogs or whatever, and don't bring them to a shelter for whatever reason. They just put them on the street, put them in garbage bags, put them in the, in the bin, and it's just not fair. I mean, if you have to get rid of puppies because you didn't want them and it was an accident, please be so kind and come and bring them to the shelter. We will not be very happy, but we will take care of them. It's better than leaving them out on the street. We have a lot of dogs and as I said last week, a lot of puppies have been brought in. Some have been, have been adopted, but some are still needing a home. But also the, uh, dogs that have been at AAA for a long time. We have a lot of older dogs, bigger dogs, that are desperately waiting for a new home. So please come and visit AAA so once in a while, have a look and see if there's anything you can help in adopting a dog. But if you cannot adopt a dog, we have now, as I said a little while ago, a new program. It's called Virtual Adoption and it's going very well. At the moment, 15 dogs have been virtually adopted by people from Germany, Finland, Holland, Belgium and Spain. 
It is a small amount per month that you choose a dog that you like at the website. And it can be a cat, of course, because we also have cats. You can choose anyone you like, just go through the website and there will definitely be one dog or cat that will appeal to you. And just let us know the name and the number of the little dog that you want to virtually adopt. We will send you a certificate, a picture of the dog and approval of adoption. You can sponsor that dog for as long as you like and the dog will get a little bit of extra attention once in a while, it gets a little treat, we will let you know the process of the dog and we will let you know if the dog will be adopted in a, a full-time home. So please come to AAA if you want a dog, come and have a look around, look at the wonderful doggies that are available. It's not only big and old and ugly dogs, they're very beautiful dogs, very small ones and very loving dogs and a lot of cats as well. So please come, if you cannot adopt, virtually adopt, let us know and don't shop, adopt. See you next week. A lot of people prefer to take their own car when going out at night. However, when it comes to time to go home, that might not be the safest or wisest option. For some, just one glass of wine could put you over the legal limit, which means if you drive, you could put yourself or others at risk, not to mention the controls. So, as we're expats living on the coast, this can be a dilemma because that's what we do. We go out, we try the wines. And that's why Linear Director have gone above and beyond with this new completely free bonus policy to people who take out car insurance with them. If you're an expat and live in Malaga, then you get to get all the benefit of this trial of Safety First People, a free bonus policy for anyone insuring their car with Linear Director. But what does this mean? That means that if you find yourself in this dilemma and think possibly you should not be driving, you can just give Linear Director a call. They will order and pay for a taxi, which will take you and your fellow companions who were with you in the car home with up to a 25 kilometer radius as long as you all fit in that one taxi and you're all going to the same place. You can even ask for them to pick up your car and take that back too. And this is seven days a week from midnight to 7 a.m. and up to four times a month. And this is obviously all in addition to the fabulous insurance that you get with Linear Director. Being a Spanish company, they cover you by all the local Spanish laws. Plus they have a fleet of tow trucks, mechanics, garages, hotels, lawyers, whatever you need. Linear Director truly do cater to our expats needs. And all we can say is yes, thank you very much. This is a really nice option to make sure we keep ourselves very safe. If you want more information on this, please go to their website lineardirector.com or call them on 952 1478 34 that's 952 1478 34 because linear director are putting your safety first hi i'm anita from the house hairdressing in alveria we have got a great team of people that would love to see you come into the salon and we can pamper you. Just come down for a complimentary consultation, we'd love to see you there. So you're a business on the Costa del Sol and you know the best way to reach customers is through word of mouth. But how can you reach more people to grow your business even faster? Before you spend a lot of money on advertising that may never reach your customers, find out how MarbeaFamilyFund.com can help spread the word about your business today. MarbeaFamilyFund.com On the 15th of July, Pokemon Go was launched onto the Spanish market. One week after, the same happened in the States, Australia and the UK. And in just that week, the Nintendo company has increased its share value in some $17 billion. Now, in my own home, I have found that my kids have this app 
on their phone and it's quite an interesting app because it's a game that you pay in play in real time so you will find that they are filming in real time inside your house um, wherever they're going and people will know where you are because you are connected to a system that not only lets people see where you are and you're filming in real time it shows your location now one of the um, ideas behind this game is that you're in virtually going to look for different prizes and rewards in a virtual game but it might say that for example one of the stars you need to collect is in a children's playground and when I heard this yesterday it made me think well we don't need people who sh wouldn't normally be in a children's playground coming up to a children's playground and it has been known in the states that people have been lured into dark alleys and back streets because people are then obviously taking advantage of them to steal them and possibly even worse last week in barcelona two chinese men were rescued from the tunnels in barcelona because they got themselves in there trying to reclaim some of these awards so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's not now just the drivers the cyclists the motorcyclists we need to look out for we need to watch out for these new Nintendo Pokemon goers who are walking around face down in their phones looking for surreal treasures. Please be careful. This is a game, but at the same time, this is real life. And there will still be traffic lights and things that you need to be aware of. Don't just concentrate on the game. And when you are playing the game, please think of other people's privacy, if you're in other people's homes or if you're in different places and who you are informing of your location to keep yourselves safe. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. Shahed at Casa Rasu always has amazing exhibitions, but two are here right now that you will not want to miss. First of all, exhibiting bags, and what less to put in a gallery, an art gallery, than this beautiful work of art. I'm just in love with this handbag, but who wouldn't be? And I'm sure that once you've met Princess Bea Augsburg, you'll be in love with her too, because I've just met her, and what a pleasure. Hello. Hello. It's nice to meet you. It's I'm nice. glad you're here. I've heard so much about you. Princess Bea <laughs> is undoubtedly one of the starlights of Marbella in your own right. You've been here for a long time, Princess. Yes, I've been here for as long, yes, a long, long time. And I've done all my work from here always. I never moved to, you know, New York or Paris to do my designs there, which would have been maybe a better place for that. But I decided to stay here because it just offers everything. Where are you from originally? Austria. We are a total Austrian family. Mm -hmm. And so you've been here for a long time and you came here with already like this plan or this is something uh, you started once you were here? Well, because we came here, my sister and I and my whole family when we were very young, so we weren't at in the business life yet. But no, I started here, I started here. And I'd, what I do now, I, I do these bags all in, in wonderful material, in, in, in authentic python leathers and in calfskin leather and the workmanship I have to always say it's proudly made in Spain because you know I, I'm really proud of making it in Spain because they really the workmanship is so your very colors good are just and it's gorgeous. all about color and for the dynamic woman you know demanding and dem dynamic woman uh, who likes colors who doesn't mind to wear a pink like that even in winter you know and uh, so I think it's simply different. Well, we all need to put lots of things in our bags, especially when you live by the beach. So there's always, we're going somewhere and doing something. And I have to say, all the bags are, as you say, they're very useful. You can actually put things in them. And at the same time, they're so dainty. I mean, I feel really girly with this bag. They are girly. They yeah. aren't girly, they're really yeah. girly. Yeah. It's lovely. Yes, that's true. Yes. So you're exhibiting now here at the Casa Rasu. And is yes. this a full-time thing that we can always come now and see your bags and buy them uh, from here? Absolutely, because Shayat was kind enough to give me some space here. And uh, it's the greatest place to exhibit nice things. And, and what uh, am I, because you've done the old town and you've had a fabulous place in Puerto Perus for many years. But I yes. suppose now it's nice to relax no, a little because, bit. No, it's not. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Sitting not relaxing <laughs> because I do now. Most of my clients are outside of Spain. And so I, I export a lot. Can we so, buy online as well? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's coming up, not, not tomorrow. 
Proximamente, coming Proximamente, soon. Proximamente, coming well, soon, yes. Um, Princess Bea of Augsburg, thank you so much thank for you. chatting with us and thank congratulations. Thank you, it was very nice. I am thank in you. love. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. They say diamonds are a girl's best friends, but Shirosky can certainly be part of my gang, that's for sure. As can this gorgeous young lady, Sarah, hello and congratulations. Hi, thank you so much. These paintings that you see behind me not only have been photographed and then painted by Sarah and her twin sister, Salma, they are then adorned with these amazing Swarovski crystals. I mean, what a beautiful concept. It's just, I love it. Thank you so much. You're interesting. Um, we curated this um, art a few months ago, me and my sister, uh, we decided to uh, do some nice uh, branding from our own, uh, like MSS art and design. Um, so we created this art a few months ago and it's very successful. Well, we're all in agreement that it looks like Sara has literally walked out from one of these beautiful canvases because you are the living embodiment Thank of you. the artwork. It's, you, you and your sister were photographers, you're originally from Iran. Iran. Yes. But how did the process go? Where did, you, where did you go from Iran? What made you leave? What's, what brought you here? Uh, from Iran we moved to Dubai uh, since from 2002 and then uh, almost uh, 13 uh, years we live in Dubai and then three years ago I moved uh, to Spain and then uh, we are separate now but still we're working together so I handle it in a Spain business she is handling in Dubai what an so, amazing combination, too. Are you identical twins? Yes, we are. She's 20 minutes older than me. Wow. How lovely. So once in Dubai, you're here in Barbea, and the collection here at the Casa Rasu is going to be here at least through the summer. So it's definitely something you want to come and see. I mean, I don't know where to start. The, each one is amazing. Tell us the process. You take first the photograph. Yes, Where's uh, the inspiration come we, from? Uh, we're choosing the photographer and we buy the photographer and we put on canvas and then we paint the old painting on it and then we start to design of uh, Sovereski stone jewelries on top of that. Wonderful. And you've got certificates for these and everything sort yeah, of we get, and we get certificate by Sovereski each painting uh, and we have a partnership with them. So this is uh, the art we created with them uh, as a partnership. Wonderful. And Thank in you. Spain, available from where? Where do, if we want to purchase this, we can come to the gallery, but do you have an online site or? No, we don't have online yet, but uh, for future, for sure, we will uh, do online so people can easier shopping online. So we are here uh, this year, we um, launched it here uh, with uh, Shahid uh, uh, helping me to uh, do exhibition here. Is uh, Every day is open from uh, 11 till 2 p.m. and then afternoon time uh, by appointment we will open the gallery. Um, till end of the August. And it's certainly well worth the visit. So I feel honoured to have met the artist. We came to the launch the other night and I was just literally blown away. And I'm still literally bedazzled, absolutely bedazzled. Thank, Thank you, you so me. much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the What's On section. Now, July is of course very busy, but hold on to your hats because August will be getting even busier. So without further ado, here we go. Now, the Feria Sabor a Malaga, which is a taste of Malaga, is on at the San Pedro Boulevard. And this continues until Sunday this week. It starts at about six o'clock until late in the evening. Now, there's lots of different foods to taste, all different tastes and styles of Malaga to introduce you to something a little bit different. There's some workshops, there's also gastronomy uh, shows, all, all sorts of different things going on. So do go along and enjoy it. 
Now, as always, it's ferrier season somewhere, and this time it's the turn of Nueva Andalucía. Now, again, this runs until Sunday. It's well underway, um, but on Saturday, you've got a foam party for the children at midday at the sports centre in La Capana. And at eight o'clock, there's hip hop at the entrance to the fairgrounds. Now, there'll be lots of different groups performing there, and at 9.30, as there is tomorrow as well, uh, on Sunday as well, at 9.30, there's all sorts of different uh, live music. And on Sunday, the final act, um, around about half 10, 11 o'clock, will be, of course, a performance by Duo Arnell, which is, of course, a very popular dance duo. Now, there's a new exhibition taking place at the Justo Guinea Gallery here in Marbella, and this runs until the 15th of September. It's by Miguel Gomez, and you can see by the poster behind me that his art is very, very different. He loves the purity of white, and with very minimum brush strokes, he manages to get a huge intensity of colours into his paintings. So quite interesting art. Do pop along and go and see it. Now, the swim race is taking place in Puerto Banus this Sunday from 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, at least the competitors will be cool. Now, this is uh, a two-prong race. There is 6,000 metres and 1,000 metres. Now, the 6,000 metres leaves from the Playa de Lavante in Puerto Banus, and they come all the way to the Playa de la Fontanilla. Now, the Fontanilla beach in Marbella is the one that is more or less opposite the skull or the boardwalk, so that area there. Now, the 1,000 metre one leaves uh, the Playa Casablanca, and that also is going to the uh, Playa de la Fontanilla. Now, as I say, they leave around about nine o'clock, so do go along and support them, and you never know, you might even catch a little sea breeze. Now, you'll probably remember that Nicole had Jenna Callahan on the show some while ago um, with her new company, Jenique Beauty. Well, next Thursday, on the 28th, she is having a, an evening all about beauty. Now, this is at the uh, Pisano Hair Transplant Clinic in Marbella, right in the centre. Now, I don't know whether any of you know the Marie Tres building um, which is basically the big, large building where all the doctors and think clinics, things like that, are located. Um, just in the middle of the Ricardo Soriano, more or less opposite the Santander Bank, behind the bus stop. So it's quite easy to find there. Now, you're welcome to join this evening about everything beauty from 7 o'clock on the 28th. Now, Dr. Pisano will be there to tell you all about Botox and various other things that the clinic offers. There'll be... Um, a specialist hairdresser to help you with any hair needs or any hair inquiries and things like that. Um, there'll also be a wellness coach, uh, clinical therapists and of course amaz uh, Jenna's amazing makeup. So do go along and enjoy a glass of kava and hopefully I'll see you all there. Now, I couldn't go um, this week, of course, without mentioning Starlight. It's in full flow, but what is coming up, the next big one, of course, is on the 24th, which is, of course, Sunday, and that is Carlos Santana. Now, he's one of the world's most renowned guitarists. His first album, Abraxas, was, can you believe, back in 1970. Um, you probably know the favourites, um, Black Magic Woman, Samba Party, they're the most famous ones anyway. Uh, so that should be a really good one. I'm looking forward to that. Then on the 29th, uh, you have Charles Aznavour. Now, he's one of the most well-known French pop singers. And over the last 50 years, probably best known for his massive hit, She. Do you remember when he used to sort of cuddle himself as well? Now, on the 31st, you have an evening of music from Phantom of the Opera. And then the next big one is on the 1st of August when you have Sir Tom Jones himself. Now, what can I say? Everybody knows Sir Tom Jones. He was fabulous last year, and I'm sure he will be again this year. So lots more news on Starlight next week. So that's all I have for you. Enjoy all these different events. Don't forget to check out the site. There's new ones being added all the time. MarbellaAzul.com. And have a great weekend. Hey, hey. 
thanks to our new production director, Noel Bohorquez, this week's programme has gone off not only without any hitches, but with some delicious catering for our guests. And this was organised by Laura, her other half, Jose, from the new company, Tomate. Hello, Laura. Hi, thank you for having me. Tomate saved my daughter's life. The first one, I believe, was in Puerto Banús. It's a little sandwich kiosk with very fresh foods. What is the philosophy behind Tomate? Well, we do try and keep it fresh and healthy and light. And the one that we have in the port, for example, is a real stop and go for people on the run, just to have a, a quick or late night bite as well. Um, we have the other one in Marbella, which is more like an urban dwelling. We've got the inside terrace, the outside terrace, um, still keeping with our line of healthy and fresh food. But we've been introducing um, woks and burgers now as well to make more hot dishes. And we also have San Pedro, um, which is a little side street, very quaint location. And uh, yeah, you really cover it all because the one in Puerto Banús is all those kids that are working late at night or going out. It's perfect for them. Exactly. The one in Marbella is right by our RTV Marbella studio. So it's good for all the business people who are out and about. And the one in San Pedro, as Laura said, is so quaint. It is just delightful. We have to record a program from there. But this week, I want to concentrate on your expansion also into catering and yes. into takeaways. Yes, we do. We do a lot of takeaways. Of course, the port one is mainly takeaways. But we do do takeaways from both San Pedro and from Marbella. But we've also now developing into the catering line. So we've been doing um, from the small caterings of 10 people going into a, onto a boat charter, for example, for the day, and they just want light lunch and picnic, to 100 people opening a gym or a, just a big opening party. We've done up to 100 people, easy light snacks, and still keeping in our main line of sort of light, um, fresh foods. We'll do cold soups, for example, um, our fresh juices with carrot and orange and ginger, all freshly pressed, uh, the lemonades. Um, the cakes. The cakes. People just absolutely <laughs> go crazy over you guys' cakes. And it's all very easy to, to move around our little salads with in little um, pots um, and, the, and obviously our main line being the baguettes as well. Well, the places are really cute, and as I say, we will be going to record from the San Pedro one, because they're all beautiful, but that one for me is it's just... a particular heart about it. It, it does. It has that real Spanish Andalus yeah. feel to it. Um, but Laura, where are you from? You've got a beautiful accent. <laughs> I'm originally from South Africa, so I'm in Cape Town, and there's plenty of places in Cape Town to get good inspiration from. We've travelled a lot to try to get inspiration for what we do, and most of it's come from South Africa. And where did you meet Jose? Here, in Marbella, and got stuck here for him. Got stuck here? You mean got stuck <laughs> on him? <laughs> and you love being here, you're not stuck here. <laughs> oh, I got stuck on him, so it's, yeah, we've been here for nine years now. And how long has Tomate been going? We've had the Tomate in the port, we'll be coming up eight years already. Um, we've only had Marbella for a year, but we've had San Pedro for two years, which was mainly, um, it was starting out for having a main central kitchen. So that's where we'll be de launching our caterings from as well. Wonderful. Well, the things are that they serve are absolutely delicious. I know because I go there very often, as do so many people. If you haven't tried tomate yet, well, not only do you get delicious food, but you get beautiful people like Laura <laughs> behind it, giving the, the love. They are, we have a very young creative team as well behind me and behind Jose that we rely on, and they are fantastic. So we have a great team. Well, it's really lovely to see you guys growing and solid step forward and absolutely delicious. Thank you so much. Thank you for and thank me. you for catering for our program. Program this Absolute week. pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, with so much <laughs> so. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. Hey, hey, hey. We've come along to the new La Paria restaurant. It used to be the Porton and it's been here for years, but they've given it a new menu, an extended menu, slightly reduced in the prices, but not sacrificing any of the quality on these fabulous traditional Spanish foods. Let's take a little look in the new La Parilla. Twisted, you've been out of shape, and you feel like you've missed it. You dropped out the race, and it's time. For 25 years, this lovely gentleman, Jesus, has been slaving over a hot stove. Well, not quite, but they have a fabulous setup here for eating a la brasa, cooked on the coals, everything's so delicious. But although Jesus doesn't speak English, after 25 years with us giris, 
the lovely Mary Noel from Mary Noel Communications is going to tell us a bit about a special event that's coming up on Monday the 25th, celebrating lamb. We in English love our lamb. No, yes, of course you love lamb. And this one will be very, very special because it's uh, especially from Castilla. And uh, a special person is coming from Valladolid. He's a very well-known asador named uh, Marco Antonio from uh, a very well-known restaurant it's Manix from Valladolid, who will be here uh, making all the lamb for the guests from uh, 12 to midnight. Wow, fabulous. So it's a whole special day dedicated to lamb, a set menu, yes. I believe, that's going to be just giving the delights, because it's a very traditional Spanish restaurant. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, well, uh, before it was named El Portalon, now the, the Jesus, the same owner, decided to rebaptize it like La Parrilla Grill. The grill. And it, is, it is famous because of their fish and meats on the, on the grill. And uh, on that Monday, 25 of July, we will have a very special menu at uh, 55 euros. So, very typical menu, Spanish menu for 55 euros, VAT included. That is a very good deal. Jesus, ¿cómo es existir, coexistir 25 años en Girilandia? Porque estás en el corazón de todos los extranjeros. I'm just asking what it's like to live 25 years in the heart of all us foreigners. ¿Cómo ha sido estos 25 años? Han sido muy bonitos, han sido una experiencia muy agradable y con épocas de más y menos trabajo, pero en definitiva muy positivos y muy buenos. Hemos trabajado intensamente durante 25 años. He's saying that for 25 years he's worked very hard. There have been lots of different lovely moments and just really giving it his heart. And very much we can see, like us English, 25 years learning no Spanish and 25 años ni una palabrita de inglés, no, no Spanish, de, de, no, no de, English. De vez en cuando, un poquito solamente, pero muy de vez en cuando. A little sí, bit, the sí. bill, more wine. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> The essentials of when you're running a restaurant. Well, Jesus, congratulations Thank on you. 25 years. The place looks amazing. The food is delicious. And when you're in Spain, you have to do as the Spanish do, and that's try the traditional, typical foods and the wines. You've got a superb bodega. You've got a lovely wine yeah. cellar. Yeah, we have a wine cellar. Very good. Yeah, yeah. about 300 um, different wines. Well, wow, one of the most impressive in Spain, I'm sure. Jesus, muchas gracias, gracias. and Mary Noel. You just yes. know to send us the best places. Yes, and just to remind you, everybody, that uh, La Parrilla Glee is located opposite the Marbella Hotel, Marbella Club Hotel. Okay, this is uh, the mile, gold mine, and we have a private parking, so it's very easy to park the car here. That's very important. In fact, actually, Ashahed is also from Casa Rasu on this week's program. I have to correct everyone that it is next to almost the Casa Rasu and the Marbella Club is opposite them. <laughs> I put things in order. But the parking is a big plus. Yes. That you have a park, a place to park, it's very easy and in the heart of the Golden Mile. Yes, that's it. Perfect. Todos bienvenidos, everyone's so welcome. ¿Verdad? Gracias, gracias, bienvenido. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, hey. Well, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for joining us for Marbella Now 83. We hope you've enjoyed seeing all the different places that we have here in our Golden Mile. You're also very welcome. If you've never been to Marbella, please try it. For further information about Marbella, you can go to the Town Hall website in various languages. That's MarbellaExclusive.com. And for everything else to do with the radio, me Marbella and Marbella Now TV, our website, RTV Marbella Now. Dot com. Be nice to each other, take care, and we'll see you next week. You'll open up your eyes wide. You feel it's gonna go your way. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Yeah.